Hello and welcome everybody to Everlasting Summer. So, the Yulia route. We, I guess it is slowly but surely coming to its end. Two episodes? Three episodes? Maybe just one, but I don't think so. Anyway, I'm really interested to see what this has to offer. By now, I kind of have the feeling it won't give me all the answers. So, I kind of have the feeling I have the, to play the Genia DLC. Because a lot is still left in the dark. And it would surprise me if too much is explained actually in this ending. But, we will see. Anyway, let's go on, shall we? I returned to the cabin and found Yulia carefully combing her tail. You were talking to him again. How do you know? For a moment I had doubts. Just guessed. He's supposed to appear when you're alone. Yes. And? He told me that nobody disappears, that we come back. Oh, by the way, I was told in the comments that, uh, or rather shown, that uh, Simeon leaves uh, the little note that says, um, you are here for a reason in the bus. And I totally forgot that. I totally forgot that. How can I forget that? Like, this is like major important stuff. <laughs> and I forgot it. I'm so stupid. But at least we know now that it is most likely that uh, the strange peony or whatever he is, the doppelganger man, is actually right. We do come on lapses. So it's not like the cat girl things that we, um... Or on the other hand, does that prove anything? I don't think this proves anything if I think more carefully about it. You know? What does that prove? I mean, it proves that the little piece of paper is still there, but it doesn't prove that, uh... That it is, uh, that it is us who is coming back. It might be a different person. I don't know. I don't know, I'm speculating again. Let's better just read. Yulia didn't answer anything. Is that so? To tell you the truth, I don't know. I sat on the bed beside her and began to think. I don't know how long we were sitting there, but soon I started to fall asleep. Just realized that I turned up the volume from last time a little bit. So I turned it down a little bit now. Just that you're not wondering that suddenly the background noises are a little bit more quiet. Oh, no, 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 yeah, but soon I started to fall asleep. Let's go watch the stars. Let's go. I wanted to sleep badly, but at the same time I felt a sense of incompleteness and was hoping for fresh air. I was hoping fresh air would clear my thoughts. A few minutes later we were at the square. Ah. The apocalyptic, apocalyptic uh, grasshoppers are back. Hooray! Or cicadas, or whatever it was. Or the Yulianas, depending on the route. Oh. I sat on the beach, and Yulia put her hat in my lap and stared at the sky. Totally necessary panty shot. Yay! Isn't it beautiful? It is. We sat in silence for quite a long time. So, what will happen tomorrow? What do you mean? Well, tomorrow is the seventh day, so it's time to leave. Do you want to leave? Suddenly I was struck by a realization. I have heard this question many times before. According to you and him, even if I don't want to, I must. So let's leave. She smiled. Will you come with me? Of course I will. After all this, you must definitely marry me. Aha! Uh -huh. Well then. And people tell me in the comments I'm old school. I don't know of a single administration that would register marriages with cat girls. So we'll look for one. Maybe in Japan. Ha <laughs> ha! Cheap Japan joke. Okay, seriously though. What will happen tomorrow? In the evening the bus will come. You are sure about that? Absolutely sure. It always comes. And? And we will take it. And then? Why are you asking all these stupid questions? Yulia protested. How should I know? Well, make a guess. And we will go back to your world. 
That would be... I stopped. We'll see. I sighed. And what about you and your many selves? I only look like this here, right? Over there I will be just regular me. Sure, with cat ears and a tail. Yulia hit me painfully in the ribs. Hey, I'm just joking. Maybe without a tail. How does she know, though, that she will be her normal self in the other world? I mean, uh, it, it is like that with Slavia and Ulyan and all the other girls, but how does she know? Hmm, I don't know. She said sadly. No, no, I like it. Don't think anything like that. She said nothing, just closed her eyes. And what's it like over there? It is different. That is the best way I can put it. Some things are better, some are worse. We have got the internet. I chuckled. And what would I do there? Well, I don't know. Let's solve the problems as they come. Wouldn't it be awkward if if it is... <laughs> I'm such an asshole, but like, Ulyana is in this world 14. And in the real world, she's like 20. Wouldn't it be awkward if she's like, she's like 20, Yulia, in this world, and in the real world, she's like 14? <laughs> Wouldn't that be awkward? That would be amazing. <laughs> I think... I think there is a fan fiction writing itself in my head right now. <laughs> Sorry. I think I, I myself found that probably funnier than every anybody else. Alright. <laughs> we sat there for a long time, talking about all sorts of foolish things. Finally, Yulia said, Let's go to sleep. Yes, good timing. I felt a wave of terrible fatigue. Tomorrow it is time to pack our things. But I have nothing to pack. How about that? He has nothing to pack. But you know what? I have. For example? I giggled good-naturedly. I just can't imagine what she was planning to take. What about my supplies for the winter? Apples, nuts, mushrooms. Do you really think you'll need all that? Of course. She jumped up and looked at me sternly. I'm going to sleep and you can do whatever you want. Uh-huh. So are we going to talk to the peony again? With these words, words, Julia marched briskly towards the camp leader's cabin. Hey, I didn't. I rushed after her. After entering the cabin, Julia immediately undressed, snuck into the bed and pulled the blanket over her head. I didn't mean anything like that. If you want to take your stores, let's take them. In the end, they could be useful for us, especially in my situation where anything could happen. I was just joking. She peeked out from under the blanket and stuck out her tongue. And now, sleep, commanded Yulia. I didn't mind it, so I undressed, lay down beside her, and we fell asleep, holding each other. <laughs> to be honest, I have no idea how all of this will unfold. I have no idea. Right at the moment. But I'm curious, really curious. I had a strange dream. No, of course, being here in this camp was extremely strange by itself, incomparable with any normal nighttime dreams. However, in this dream, everything seemed so real that but when I woke up, I couldn't remember a thing. There were only vague images of a long driveway, an old rusted bus, the rickety gates of the camp, collapsed statues of Pyrrhus, and an abandoned square. I ran through Sovyanok back and forth, as if to trying to find someone. But exactly who remained a mystery to me. Huh, okay. When I woke up, the sun was already setting. A bright sunbeam was lighting up the dust, drifting in the silence of the room and painting it with all the colors of the rainbow. Reflections on the glass took on different outlines. Look from one angle and it's just a spot of sunlight. Look from another and it's a pirate waving his cut glass. I stretched lazily and yawned. Turning to the other side, I saw Yulia, sleeping peacefully next to me. Good morning. I thought she was sleeping, said Yulia, without opening her eyes. It's daytime already. Morning starts when you wake up. 
and talking just the same way I did before. So now you've changed your mind? Well, I don't know. During the last week, I got used to getting up in the morning. That was not entirely true, because I didn't always wake up with the sunrise, and you regularly missed the lineups. You want to say that you, uh, you want to say that you have changed? She giggled. I think any man in my position would change, at least a little. It seemed quite natural to me. Yes, perhaps. I won't argue. A long silence followed. The kind of silence where you are not tortured by the need to say something, just to break the oppressive awkwardness. This silence could say more than any words. Well, we are leaving today? I asked, finally. I think so. You think? You mean you're not even sure? Not completely. This is happening for the first time. You mean the disappearance of the pioneers? Not just that. She got out of bed and started to dress. I looked at her mesmerized, unable to look away. What are you looking at? Get up! It's time to pack! You mean your berries and mushrooms? Of course! Julia stood arms akimbo. Never heard of that word before, and looked at me resentfully. Do you want all my supplies to be gone? Oh, of course I don't. To tell the truth, I didn't really give a damn about them. Yesterday you did, but... You know, probably you're suffering, suffering from amnesia. Or bad judgment. Or all of that. I don't know. To be precise, I just don't see the point in stocking food for a one-way journey. Yesterday you said it might be useful, because you don't know what happens. At least without a return ticket for sure. A few minutes later, we were standing in the same forest glade, where the day before, Yulia had been sprinkling a mushroom with sugar. She went behind a tree, threw aside the leaves, and pulled out a heavy sack. All this? This isn't all. This is just what is necessary. I couldn't put what I planned to say in a nice way, so I decided to say nothing. The wisest thing you have yet done in this game. Actually, no, that is not true. I think... Simeon was very reasonable in the Simeon route. I have to say that, but except for that he was usually pretty douchey and stupid. The sack was filled with mushrooms, berries, apples, nuts, all mixed up. I immediately had serious doubts about the fitness for human consumption of this assorted lot. Take it, said Julia, pointing at the sack with an easy smile. Well, I hope you understand that I won't be able to. No, no, you're strong. Look how massive you are. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I got, I got to know this man a little. I mean, he looks buff, that's true. We saw him in the water, he looks buff. But he is a wuss, like one of the worst kinds. He can't even carry like five kilos around camp and stuff like that. She used her hands to indicate the difference in our heights. I tried to lift the sack. It weighed at least 30 kilos. Okay, a sack weighing 30 kilos on the other hand and not in a backpack or something. That is pretty heavy, I have to admit. <laughs> but I guess you'll get it to the bus stop. Look, let's only take some of it. We won't be able to eat all this anyway. I was trying to cheat. Why not? Winters are long in these lands. How would you know that? I guessed. I tried to make the most painful grimace I could. I can manage it to the square at most. Have mercy on me. Heal your thought a little. Okay, then throw out the berries. What a great solution. Get rid of the lightest stuff. However, I didn't object, and so I put my hand into the sack. I can't say it got any lighter. I said when I finished with the berries. I don't want to hear it. I sighed and sank helplessly to the ground next to the sack. Then let's carry it in turns. But it's heavy, <laughs> exclaimed Julia. That is what I'm telling you. I mean, it's heavy for me. As if it is light for me. I muttered under my breath, trying to make Julia not hear it. It is light for you. It seems I should not underestimate her cat ears. Okay, let's come back here later. For now it would be nice to have something to eat. Well, maybe. She smiled and held out her hand to me. The canteen was filled with the smell of fried potatoes. Yulia flitted around me, watching me cook. To tell the truth, I never found any special pleasure in doing this. 
I always wanted to start eating immediately, without waiting for all the ingredients to be prepared, the water to boil, the dumplings to float up. That's why I'm usually fine with eating sandwiches or fast food. You're doing so well. I told you there is nothing special to it. But, but... She tried to find words. But you're doing well anyway. I'm glad you like it. Of course I like it. May I say at this point... Ulyana was f was 14 and she was actually, the way she behaved, she was probably younger. <laughs> at least she was portrayed, portrayed uh, younger. You know what I mean. She was not half as stupid as she is. She's a b b itsy bitsy tiny bit. She's going on my nerves. With all this uh, child... Uh, she's, she's this typical Nico Nico. You know, this cat character. You have a magical animes and stuff like that. She has that down. One one problem of the game, like every character is an anime cliche. At least to a certain degree. And most of them to a degree what really doesn't help the game. Sounds more dickish than I actually wanted it to sound, but uh, it's not like I, uh, I'm lying here. Judging by the way Yulia was demolishing the potatoes, she actually enjoyed my simple culinary creation. Are you worried? Chew first, then speak. What a loot! You must behave in polite society. And what kind of society are we in here? Yulia spread her hands to the sides and laughed. That was true, the canteen was empty, just like the whole camp. What do you think? Well, where are they all gone? How should I know? She picked up the last piece with her fork and deftly popped it into her mouth. You miss them? Sort of. What about me? I'm better than any stray dog. Another quote. I don't get. <laughs> I didn't pay any special attention to it this time. Given that you're some kind of cat, you have definitely got your quotes right. Are you feeling lonely? Well, I'm not alone here. Just the two of us. But if what had happened didn't happen, we may be. I stop for a moment. So in other realities, you and me weren't so... Uh, close? Yulia finished for me. Yes. No. It is strange. It is strange yet that you are so close here. I really have no idea how that happened, really. <laughs> Why? Well, because there are a lot of camps, as you say. And according to the theory of probability, which means that everything that had happened within the last two days is really something exceptional. You say that as if it's bad. Of course not. I felt the blood rush to my head. It's just strange. There are lots of strange things here. That is why I use that word so often. Anyway, you're just nitpicking. Who? Me? Never. She laughed. No, you're seriously nitpicking. Especially when it comes to words. Why would I do that? I can't even imagine. You'd know better. Seems like for any of my arguments, she had already an answer prepared. As if she knew in advance what I would say. Forget it. So let's go. Where? I realized that saying this was a big mistake. Now she'll definitely drag me back to the sack. Well, there is enough time till the bus arrives, so we could... All right, the supplies. I just scratched my chin and followed her. Epic fail. Carrying nearly 25 kilos is not easy, even for a short distance. I stopped every 50 meters to rest. Yulia hurried and encouraged me, but it was just making things worse. I don't know if I deserve to meddle in some strange sack of catgirl supplies short distance carrying event, but about an hour later the sack was transported to the bus stop. You know, if you somehow get it on your shoulders, it's not that bad, actually. I mean, if, and 25 kilos, you can get 25 kilos on your shoulders, and then it's not really, then you really don't need to stop every f 50 meters. But, uh, yeah, Simeon, not that intelligent. We learned that. I collapsed beside it, exhausted. That is it. You're such a hero. See, nothing to be afraid of. My whole body ached, my muscles burned, and rivers of sweat flowed from my forehead, stinging my eyes. I don't know what reward I was owed for this, but this competition was more like the Olympics for mentally challenged people. Though I won, I'm still a retard. 
That is not a nice thing to say. But it was a good one. Look, the bus is coming. What? I jumped up. My fatigue vanished in an instant. So we're not going to meet the strange pioneer again. Interesting. Or maybe we will. Hmm. Something could be indeed... Something could indeed be seen in the distance. I narrowed my eyes and saw the Icarus. But why? Julia told me that it would arrive closer to the night. Moreover, I had expected the Elias bus. Hmm. Soon the bus stopped in front of us and the door opened, inviting us in. The driver's seat was empty, but I was not really surprised. Much stranger things had happened here. Coming? Julia easily jumped onto the first step and gestured for me to follow her. Don't you think it is weird that buses go by themselves? Well, she thought about that. Of course it is strange, but you said yourself that there are plenty of strange things here. Yes, she was right on that one. Anyway, I had no choice. In either case, whether I stay or whether I go on the bus, I'm not sure about what will come next. But in case of the second choice, I had at least an ill illusory hope of escaping from this camp. I sighed, and with one last effort lifted the sack and got onto the bus. We drove for about an hour. Julia was constantly chattering about something, but I wasn't listening. That is actually also quite, uh, quite bad, because he's not tired and he can't sleep, and he doesn't go to the real world when he doesn't sleep, you know what I mean? On the other hand, he slept with Lena on the bus and he still didn't get to the real world. So, who knows? I carefully studied the passing landscapes through the window. Forests, fields, rivers, forests, fields. Absolutely nothing suspicious. By the way, was there, there I think there are this one sentence missed in this route. You know the sentence he always said in every route? Like, uh, if, his, if my brain was usually on blah blah blah, this time it's like a blah blah blah. Do you remember what I mean? I really have the feeling he didn't say that in this one. And it seemed important to me because he said it in every route. Oh well. On the one hand, this gave me some hope, but on the other it was a sign that in the end nothing will change. Because in this world it seems everything is slow and measured, following its well-established rules. That is how it at least it was at least a few days ago. Although maybe I shouldn't be drawing conclusions after having been there only a week. Well, now I'm sure everything will be fine. I looked at her carefully. Cat ears, a long tail that moved rhythmically back and forth, slightly enlarged fangs. Julia seems like a character from a fairy tale. From a strange fairy tale, though. Probably a fairy tale from anime. <laughs> we can't decide what to do with her in the real world later. I was turning into one big throbbing vein, ready to burst any moment. I was waiting, waiting for the how this will end. The result could be anything. For me it was important not to go crazy ahead of time. My nerves were stretched to the limit and I tried not to think about anything. But it was impossible to distract myself. Hey, are you even listening? Huh? No, sorry. I was in deep thought. Well, as always, she pouted. That was such a big moment, you know. We can get out. Get out of this camp. So it's a very important moment for me. Well, it's important for me too, but I'm not worried. You simply can't see this in context. What do you mean? Before, I lived in a different world. The real one, as it seemed. So I have something to compare this camp to. And you, we can say, were born here. No, I wasn't. How do you know? I just know, I know that, I know so many movie quotes that Tobias, that is me, doesn't know. <laughs> the bus peacefully bounced over the bumps, shaking me more and more. The steering wheel was turning on its own and I soon stopped noticing the absence of a driver. My eyes began to close and I dozed off. Good thing he can always sleep, even in daytime, just like that. Some girl bent over me. She was gently whispering something in my ear. So tenderly that... I felt a strong blow on the hat. Hey, don't sleep! Am I disturbing you? I asked in annoyance, rubbing the bruised place. You're not listening to me. 
If we escape from here, we'll have lots of time for conversation. If... If... And if we don't escape, then we will have even more time. I tried to smile, but just thinking that we wouldn't ever leave this camp frightened me a lot, so I just gave a stupid grin. It's better if we don't escape, because in your world, I don't know what to expect there, but you won't pay any attention to me at all. I will. I promise. I hugged her, in se her sincerely. Really truly? Really truly. Huh, so, yeah, ah, now I remember. This was the conflict of the Miku route, right. Masha was his old, old girlfriend and uh, he didn't pay enough attention to her. Right, that's what it was. I don't know if this has anything to, uh, to do with this. But we'll see about that. Yulia leaned against me. And you listen to me? Of course. And you'll always agree with me? And no, don't go psycho on me, cat lady. Sure. Oh, well, Simeon is a psycho too, I guess. She pulled away and looked into my eyes. Well, then I forgive you. A loud laugh filled with the bus cabin. With the bus cabin. Filled the bus cabin. Jesus. Me no speaky English today. But be careful. Don't you forget about that. Or try to deceive me. Want to sign a contract? A marriage contract? I don't have the property for that anyway. But I do. <laughs> Okay, that was a good one. Julia pointed at the back, lying in the aisle. Well then... I tried to remember what I had bought with my money. Here! I took my mobile phone out of my pocket. But this time it was already out of charge. What's that? Oh, he did that in other routes too. Giving the girls the mobile phone. Julia asked curiously, taking the mobile. A very useful thing in my world. You can communicate with people at a distance. Wow, that is really cool. Excellent, that will do. She put the mobile on the seat. Deal then. My supplies for the winter are from me, and from you is that thing. Okay, deal. Alright, now we are husband and wife. Can I, uh, can I, can I uh, once again uh, talk about the thing that she might be uh, 14 in the real world? This would be even more awkward and hilarious now. But I'm just saying. She smiled slyly. Hey, wait. I suddenly remembered that all this conversation had started with a marriage contract. Anyway, without an official registration, when we get to your world, we will register our marriage. A man without a wife is like a kitchen without, without a knife. Aha! <laughs> Aha! If we get there, of course. Yulia said nothing, but just stared straight forward with her wide eyes wide open. Yay, my favorite music is back. I love that music. It's so creepy. Yay. Also, something strange happened. I followed her gaze and realized that the bus was full of people. All of them were wearing pioneer uniforms. And they all looked exactly like that pioneer. Oh, really? To me, it looks just looks like the shadows of the normal people in the bus. Just saying. But, may I dare to say, very good idea to give that strange pioneer different music. And I was, oh, too bad. Now he doesn't have the cool music. And now where it's getting, like, tense, now we get the music back. Very good idea. Nobody said a single word. They just looked silently in my direction. I could not see their faces, clothes, statues, yes, but their faces were shrouded in shadows that seemed to appear from nowhere. It was as if instead of the hats that normal people have, they had mini black holes. I started to shiver and my back broke out in goosebumps. Yulia squeezed my hand. With an enormous effort, I forced myself to look at her. She was very scared too. If I was alone at that moment, I would have probably fainted. But right now, I was responsible for more than only my own life. Who are you? I gritted out with difficulty. The pioneers, pioneers maintained the terrifying silence. It became hard to breath. I was grasping for breath, but my brain refused to work on low oxygen, and I lost consciousness for a moment. Who are you? What do you want? 
I heard Julius shout just as I regained my senses. A pioneer stood up from the first seat and walked toward us. Hi, Simeon. We have decided to go back home too. Two. Two. A chorus of voices filled the bus. We'll keep you company. I didn't know what to say. This was the strangest situation I had yet experienced in the camp. Neither Julia, nor the city, nor the disappearance of Pioneers, nor the strange person standing before me were comparable with this. I dare to say differently. I mean, what is more strange? I mean, we know there are parallel universes. We know people from parallel universes can enter. What does this make things stranger? Not... Oh, well. So... We're already 30 minutes in again. Feel like being an asshole. And also then the next episode will probably be the final one. So, I guess it's a good point to stop here. So, thank you everybody for watching. Come back for the next part. And I'll see you then. Bye bye.